Welcome back. So let me show you what I've done for the changes on the cowling to improve the cooling. So what I've done, as you can see here, is I've basically cut out a section of the cowling here. As you can see in there. Cut it out, you know, obviously along here, up here, around here, and then created this aluminum piece there. Just out of some 25 thou thick aluminum, just bent it and taped it into place right now just with some um, of that metal tape on both the outside and on the inside. Obviously this is, you know, proof of concept to see how this works. But what this has given me now is uh, about 12 inches across here and about six and a quarter inches high here. So overall it's about 75 square inches of space and I've got it on both sides. So I've added 150 square inches of outlet space and combined that with the 67 I believe that I had here, around about 67 for that. So now I have 217 square inches of outlet space. And going on the inlet up there, I have about 124, I believe. So I'm not quite one to two, um, but I'm way better than I was without this. And one of the advantages of this is, as you can see, the high speed air coming down the wing here, the top of the wing will ramp up onto this and flow off of here and then create a nice low pressure. And same with the air coming down here, that will basically be deflected outboard a little bit. Um, it's pretty much in line with uh, a straight line, so instead of it curving in following the fuselage, it's just flowing straight back here. As you can see, that's the direction of travel. Um, but anyway, the air will be held back here, and so that'll create a nice big low pressure area here. And underneath here, it's just basically a straight flow from underneath the wing. So that should actually um, do really well for drawing the air out. I think it's going to be much better than doing anything like creating, you know, you know, little shark, shark gills or anything here or creating any sort of other outlet like that. It just wouldn't have been the same. And, and you know, just fortunately, when I did the design for this, you know, copied off what everybody else does with these cowlings and gave me all this extra space. And as you can see, there's a ton of room in there. Now, potentially, I could put other stuff in terms of cooling here if I needed to, but if you look there, you can see there's the headers and same on both sides. So the heat coming off of those can directly be drawn out of here and then up the front there beyond all that you know stuff there is where the radiator is and the condenser so all the heat coming uh, down through those can get easily drawn back and pulled out here before it sort of gets to the back and then any of the heat that's in here behind where the redrive is that can come out the back around the spinner so i think that's going to work pretty well um, we'll have to see how it goes uh, with the testing All right, so this is the first test um, just by doing a high speed run down the runway. And as you can see in the bottom corner there, I've got um, that meat thermometer thing that I bought a while ago. I've actually mounted that in the left side cowling there now. And I've got it sort of facing outwards so I can actually pick up some natural light. And that way I can put the camera on it and I can see what's going on. Now, I wasn't able, able to really do this before because it was always dark under the cowling and I, didn't, I just didn't have a setup so for doing this. But I've got one of the probes um, Basically, the end, the, the you know, pointy end of it, taped to the aluminum pipe. The one, uh, I think it's one and a half, or one and a quarter inch aluminum pipe that returns the coolant um, from the engine to the radiator. And then the other one on the bottom there is um, on the pipe coming out of the radiator, so you can see the difference in the two. And you know, keep in mind that this temperature reading here is probably about you know 10 to 15 degrees lower than the actual because of the the lag and the heat um, you know dissipation from the aluminum pipe but as you can see there um, once I get going and then the heat comes out of the engine there's a bit of a lag but um, you know it's starting to pick up there 145 degrees and you'll notice that the coolant coming out of the radiator is much lower and this was kind of surprising to me that should have been you know within 10 degrees or so but you can see at the end of the run there, 167 degrees uh, temperature. So, you know, add another 10 to 15 to that, about 180. And that's what it was showing on the engine, um, on the Motec stuff. But 80 degrees coming out, there's a 90 degree drop going across there. So I was completely surprised by this. And um, my immediate sort of thought was, well, something's gone on with the thermostat. It's not allowing enough flow to go through there. So it's it's just taking too long to run through the radiator and subsequently it's just you know staying cool or cooling down too much um, so after that I immediately started looking online to see you know learn more about this thermostat and see you know what was going on with it 
um, to see if I could figure that out. All right, so looking online, getting some more detail and stuff, this is what the whole thermostat looks like, and it's basically encapsulated into the, the oil filter as well. So um, that's basically it there. And I was just looking, well, what if I wanted to remove it? You know, it looks like I could remove it fairly easily. There's an O-ring around there, but that's obviously not ideal. Um, so, you know, I had a quick look through all this. And uh, then the next thing I did was I have the schematic. So this is the schematic of the whole cooling system. And I was looking, here's the thermostat here. And, you know, the reason why my front um, nose cooling loops loop cools down so well, because it's basically the this heater loop up here and when that comes back with the cool coolant from there it goes around and it bypasses the thermostat and it just comes right directly into the water pump there so that's why that's working so well but the radiator comes back and goes through the thermostat as you'd expect and then I'm looking over here number four and I see this map controlled engine cooling thermostat F265 and I'm all map controlled man I didn't realize that before I never really paid much attention to that and I was thinking map control, that, that means it's controlled by the ECU somehow. So I went back and looked at this some more, and I was looking at that, well, it just looks like a thermostat, you know, it looks a bit, little bit more complicated than a regular one, but I clicked through this, and I was looking at it through the different pictures here, and there's the thermostat in detail, and it just, you know, looks obviously a little bit more complicated than normal. And then I looked at this, and I was like, that looks like a connector on there, you know? That's just looking very subtle on that whole setup. And so I went back here, and I looked, and I was like, well, there it is there. It's the connector on there. And I don't recall ever seeing that. And there you can see it's over here. And I knew where that was with respect to the engine. It's on the very front of the engine right now, and it's facing towards the you know port side of the ship. Um, so anyway, I came back in the next day and I looked and sure enough, it's actually got a connector on it and it's wired to the harness. And I'm like, oh, okay. So the guys from MoTeC, when they did the, the initial harness, what they did was they basically pulled all the connectors and everything off the initial harness and they wired them all back up again and then they wired them to the connectors that go to the MoTeC ECU. So I was like, all right, well, they wired it up, but what are they wired it to? So I had to do a bit of chasing and I looked through the docs that they sent me um, that showed all the pinouts, the way they connected everything, and I couldn't really see a reference to that. And so I ended up having to um, basically, you know, take the connectors off the ECU and just manually chase where those wires were going and I actually figured out that they'd hooked it up to just some random um, outlets or some random connectors there um, on the ECU and they, it wasn't programmed to do anything. And then I did a bunch more reading. I, I looked up the name of this thing by the by this number F265 on the Audi thing and actually found some documentation about it and read how it all works and stuff. And, and it turns out it's basically um, a resistor in there that you put um, you know, voltage across and the resistor warms up and it's surrounded by wax and then the wax melts. And when the wax melts, it allows the thermostat to open up further. So um, looking at the picture there, I'm kind of guessing that this center section in here maybe is where the wax is in there. Um, but the documentation basically says that by default, the thermostat is set to maintain the engine at 110 degrees Celsius, which is 230 degrees Fahrenheit. And I was like, well, that's where the engine's always been. I've been trying to get it to come down to 180, you know. <laughs> and so uh, reading a little bit further, it says that once you open that thermostat up, um, and you can control it. It says once you open it up, you can get the temperature, or it's set to maintain the temperature down to 85 degrees Celsius, which is, you know, 100 and, uh, 185 degrees Fahrenheit. So I was all, that's exactly what I need. So needless to say, it didn't take me that long now that I chased the wires back there to basically switch um, the connectors into uh, one of the half bridge outputs there in the ECU, which allows me to, uh, you know, apply a voltage there and I basically set this thing up as um, a secondary fan on the coolant system and then I can uh, decide exactly at what temperature it opens up and sure enough um, you know when I went to test it it works as advertised it opens up and I'm not sure exactly where the temperature will be maintained just yet because I haven't you know done the full testing as of recording this right now 
um, but it definitely um, changes the flow and drops the temperature as you'll see uh, coming up on this test that I'm doing now. So this is like a massive nugget here. I've been fighting with this engine, you know, trying to try and get the temperature to come below 230 and the whole time this thermostat has basically been stopping me from doing it. So, and you know, nobody else had pointed this out to me and because MoTeC had done the in initial wiring, I was kind of oblivious that for this, about this connector and it's so hidden at the front of the engine that you just don't even see it. Um, and it wasn't labeled or anything like that. It was just basically had a, you know, a connector on it and wired into the harness. Uh, anyway, so let's have a look and see how um, the tests were on the ramp once I was able to open this up. All right, so this time around I've just overlaid um, the, the temperature readout there over the logs and you can hear the engine running there on the audio because it's coming through from the overlay with the temperature thing there. And starting out, cold engine, um, and this is with the thermostat not enabled yet. And now just about to do a run up here and down the bottom there you can see that coolant fan to enable um, and it's disabled right now so this first run here is just the way everything was before and again this is just sitting on the ramp not going down the runway here at all so same type of thing as before there's a bit of a lag um, before the uh, uh, coolant temperature starts to rise coming out of the engine. You see 88 degrees there right now. And in a second you'll see it start to flow. So there it goes, 90. And then it'll go up reasonably quickly. <laughs> 95, yeah, now. So now it's starting to flow. Okay. And then you can see, obviously, the outlet temperature, again, is still lagging a lot. So it's not a lot of flow going through. It's very uh, limited. So still, again, 170 to 84. So 90 degree difference in there right now. So and I'll let that uh, idle there for a little bit. And you can see coming up there, down the bottom there, where I've got the coolant fan enabled, you see that uh, it's still disabled. But I'm going to dis uh, enable it here in a second, and you'll see what happens to the temperatures there. So I got 187 over 104. And I'm able to, because of the ECU, I'm able to manually switch it on and off as well, even as, as well as having a thermostat or temperature controlled, which is you know how, how I have it rigged right now. But this first time I just basically turned it on manually. So we got 189, 109, and now's where I turn it on. And you'll see it doesn't take very long. And 109 is going up there, 130, 140. So you can see there's a lot more coolant flowing there right now. It made a big difference. And eventually that'll settle up to you know, 160 something, I believe, before this next little run. So yeah, I got right now a 20 degree drop in there. So that's much better. And of course, you know, the, uh, the fan is running across the radiator there, so that's pulling cool air and that's helping drop the temperature. So yeah, this is, I mean, it's just way better. 14 degree drop there now, perfect. It's exactly what it should be. Um, and you can see there too that the temperature, the coolant temperature in the chart there actually dropped off. Yeah, the, the teal blue one dropped off after I um, opened it up. Now I do the second run. And again, sitting still on the ramp, so I'm not getting great airflow other than what the fans are pulling and what the props pulling through the cowling. And you see now, it's maintaining, you know, just like a 10 degree drop. And this one, you know, I let it run a little bit longer here, so you'll see it gets up to about 225 degrees uh, coming out of the uh, engine because you know I'm not really moving that much. I'm not moving at all. But you see it's main, just maintaining 10 degree drop now, so it's actually doing a much better job, doing a lot of work. And also too, you can see here on the, on the graph there, you see the, um, the ambient temperature, the red one, that's 123 degrees right now. So that's 
um, ramping up there because it is still getting warm under the cowling. Um, but that used to go to like 145 before when you do these ramp runs. Um, so it's staying much cooler and I think that's got to do with the new outlet. So there you see 226 over 212. There's still 14 degree drop. Um, anyway, so it's, it's flowing much better. And now we'll skip forward here in a second to uh, the run that I did down the runway. This is a, a new run down the runway. Um, you know, once everything had already warmed up and pretty much the starting temperatures for this run down the runway are the same as the one that I've just done here um, where I started out. So we'll be able to see the difference between, uh, you know, what happens with the, um, with, you know, running down the runway and getting all that fresh air coming in to the inlet scoop and, you know, being drawn out by the prop running. So here we are starting at 183 over 174. And uh, you know, I'm just about to bring the power up. And you can already see there on the chart, you know, the blue one there, the engine oil temperature, it doesn't go um, anywhere near as high as what it did just sitting still on the ramp for about the same amount of power, maybe not quite as long, but. So you see the temps there, still only like, what, only four degree drop right now. And you see the engine oil temperature only 211 there now, and I think it gets up to 218, which is basically operating temperature, because there's another thermostat that controls the oil flow, and that one's set for 219 degrees, according to the documentation. Um, so yeah, see so yeah, after that run there, 218 on the oil, 204 on the coolant, and then this is showing, you know, 196 over 187. So, um, way better than I was and then uh, because I run down the runway there you can see that the ambient temperature has dropped down uh, to 120 so I'm getting good uh, airflow running through the cowling as well and that's keeping everything pretty cool under there so I guess the next thing that remains to be seen is what it's like in the air so we'll see how that looks uh, you know as we go forward into the next bit of this video and if you recall from the previous ramp run there you know similar type of power setting the temperature uh, coming out of the engine got to 230 degrees and this one only you know 195 was the most it got to and so the cooling is working really well on the cowling now too so I mean two two big changes here obviously the thermostat is the huge one but I think the cowling is going to make a big difference as well uh, but as I said let's see how it uh, plays out in the air all right so beautiful sunny afternoon here late afternoon and uh, just starting to roll out on 3.5 uh, but unfortunately you're gonna have to wait till the next video to see how it all turns out so please tune in for that one and I'll have uh, all the info for you on the, the improvements that were made so thanks again for watching tune in for the next one cheers